Welcome to the five best things and five worst things done in Godzilla X Kong. This video was just posted yesterday by Watch Mojo. I'm immediately upset by it because it says five worst things the movie did. It was perfect. Sure, the ending was rushed and it could have been a little more descriptive. Whatever, bro, it was perfect. So let's get into it. Let's go argue, shall we? Leave a like, subscribe if you love Godzilla, and let's do it. We've made All some right. minor augmentations. Let's crack right. open this Welcome turd. To Watch Mojo. And today we're taking a look at the highs and lows in the latest installment of the MonsterVerse. Lows? We'll keep spoilers to a minimum, although we will touch upon a few plot points. Something is coming. That's what Something she said. They're afraid of. Number five. Worst. The human characters are meh. The humans are often cited as the weakest link of any MonsterVerse movie. MonsterVerse shows are another story, as Monarch Legacy of Monsters gave us several layered human characters with compelling backstories. Okay, I actually hated the Monarch Legacy characters so much more though, dude. They're so complaining. How are you gonna complain about your dad for like 12 episodes, bro? That's crazy. I much preferred the movie humans. Why? Oh, why do you have these pictures? I guess I didn't like either of them, really. I'm not here for the humans. How did you get in here? Uh, the little girl and Bernie were cool. While we can't say the humans in Godzilla Kong are bad, they still aren't especially interesting. To the studio's credit, you get the sense that they received the memo that the audience isn't here for the humans. For most of human civilization- These people are complaining we didn't get more human backstory. That's who judges we these movies. that life could only exist on the surface of our planet. As such, there are fewer to keep track of, with just Rebecca Hall's Eileen, Brian Tyree Henry's Bernie, and Kaylee Hoddle's Gia returning. I will be honest, that lady bugged the crap out of me a lot. She is very, anyone who cries immediately pisses me off, but Bernie and the little girl were awesome. Dan Stevens is the only prominent addition. What is that? I like this guy. He's like our crocodile Dundee of Ace Ventura ripoff. I don't know. That's not Kong. All great actors, but they're mainly there to dish out exposition as we wait for the film to get back to the main attraction. Number five, best embracing the Showa era. This was the made me so happy. Are defined so by happy. Generations. The first being the Showa era, which lasted from 1954 to 1975. I was, I was like, this is gonna confuse the crap Where out of modern audiences, but Go Godzilla fans are gonna love it. The era's subsequent entries leaned more into kaiju action with additional monsters, outrageous scenarios, and Godzilla being redefined as a protector rather than an antagonist. Godzilla Kong is in the spirit of these movies. Filmmakers even managed to incorporate some of the Showa era's goofier elements in a way that doesn't feel out of place in this more grounded universe. Goofy! God, I love Scar King Worst. so much. It's no Godzilla minus one. Oh, shut it's up, you nerd! It's fair that Godzilla Kong is coming out a few months after Godzilla minus one. Bro, they're very different films. Like Godzilla is very versatile. So many people are complaining it's not like minus one. Why would you want it to be? Minus one was beautiful and perfect and everything, but it was just one kaiju. For this movie, you want big, epic, nonsense battles. Which Come won on. an Oscar for its astounding special effects and the Japan Academy Award for Best Film. Godzilla. <laughs> The comparison is inevitable, though, and there's no denying that minus one. It's is only inevitable because people film, compare it with a more it's emotional silly story, uses. higher stakes, and visuals that, while not as flashy, feel more game-changing. Yeah, that minus said, one was incredible, Godzilla but Kong whatever. Godzilla has different artistic goals with more emphasis on bombastic action, which it delivers in spades. It's apples and Damn bananas, right. and if you go in with that mindset, it's a satisfying banana. You just As go, what for the hell? <laughs> wanting another bite of apple, we're sure Minus One will be streaming at some point. It's a satisfying banana. What the hell is this? A, I, I'm not even gonna, not even gonna say it. Number four. But well, we're all Best, thinking it. Focusing more on the monsters. We have a feeling that Legendary took a page from the modern Planet of the Apes movies, which gradually shifted the focus away from humans, making the digital characters the true stars. I don't think it took inspiration from Planet of the Apes at all. I, th I think it took inspiration from older Godzilla movies. Apes win war. Yeah, yeah. Showing Apes movie clips. We together. all know the movie. Strong. I get it. While humans remain present in Godzilla, oh, I see. They're showing the, the part that they think took inspiration. With giving Maybe. The actors enough face time. There are long stretches of the story without a human in sight, almost to the point we forget that they're in the movie. It was so great. This whole scene the was like a 20 minute stretch of no humans. With their scenes ranging from thrilling to intimidating to surprisingly emotional. Dude, the good thing that they're listing was just a bad thing two minutes ago. Now they're saying more monsters is a good thing, but not enough humans was a bad thing. It's pick 
Pick a struggle! We can't help but wish the movie went all in on this approach. If the franchise keeps moving in this direction, though, the MonsterVerse may get its war for the Planet of the Apes. I showed you mercy when I spared you. You people watch one movie and think everything's based off of it forever, you don't you? And you killed my family. Number three, worst, the pacing. Well, Godzilla Kong can yes. admittedly feel like three movies fighting for screen time. What? One is about Kong's search for companionship and- I could actually kind of agree on this one a little bit, actually, now that I think about it. It, it felt like they had to squeeze a bunch into the, like, the ending felt kind of rushed a little bit. Ascension as the king of the titular new empire. Titular. What is that? Kong has the best facial expressions. I just love them. This is by far the most absorbing part. Had it been the sole focus, Peter Jackson's King Kong might have had competition for the century's best take on the character. Alas, the film begins to drag whenever the human subplots come back into play. Did she just say Percy Jackson's was better a take on Kong than this? That was like a freaking 40 foot tall monkey who died because he loved white women too much. How dare you? <laughs> I'm so offended. Every time I get pissed off, I get thirsty. Godzilla's story isn't much more engaging. Godzilla spends most of the first two acts slowly stomping to the third act. Godzilla doesn't fight many monsters or wreak much havoc along the way. Bro, every scene he showed it, he's rampaging and killing either a monster or like a city. I, I honestly- Making the audience feel as if they're in traffic, waiting to get to the arena for a big showdown. Wow. 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 Number three, best, the visual storytelling. Adam Wingard demonstrated with Godzilla vs. Kong that he has a keen visual eye for large-scale set pieces. Wingard did make a good movie. The dude knows his Godzilla, Godzilla stuff. Godzilla Kong doesn't disappoint in that department, but Wingard goes a step further with the film's use of visuals. Whereas most tentpole Hollywood movies exclusively employ CGI for action, Wingard gives Kong a lot of quiet moments of self-reflection. Kong is developed yeah, I hate to break it to you, but I feel like he's still used to, I feel like Kong was still CGI though, you know? Warrior who's fought battle after battle. Without anyone else to fight for though, all of this is expressed through Kong's face and body language without relying on any dialogue. It reminds us that Kong isn't just a big senseless monster. He can be a complex, even tragic figure whose greatest fear is being alone. Poor Kong. I'm so happy he got Number his two, happy ending. Worst, Godzilla and Kong's time together cut short. Godzilla vs. Kong saw the titular titans clash on a massive Oh yeah, that's titular twice now. They did a good job of spreading out their interactions, with the two starting as opponents before finally teaming up. I feel like, I don't know. Even this Godzilla makes sense Kong to me. Godzilla essentially does all of that again, except this time it's condensed into the third act. They're not Godzilla necessarily best Kong buddies, so we're gonna be hanging out. near the climax when they butt heads again in Egypt. But I don't know. What did everyone else think about it? I, I didn't even consider this complaint. Godzilla and Kong didn't spend enough time together. It's like, what? That seems like that was, was, wasn't really the point of the movie. Between the Transformers and Napoleon, haven't the pyramids been destroyed enough times? Why do all of these fights occur around historic landmarks anyway? While the fight is cool, it feels rushed, and the same can be said about the central dynamic. For a film called Godzilla Kong, we're disappointed that there isn't more of them together. Bro, is it not called Godzilla X Kong? Who the hell's saying Godzilla Kong out there? It's driving me crazy. Number two, best, Kong and Mini Kong. The film's most gripping dynamic isn't between Kong and Godzilla, but rather Kong and Mini Kong, who the internet has identified as Suko. Just say Suko. Is that a Mini Kong? Suko recognizes crazy. Kong as somebody who can free him and his fellow apes from their cruel oppressor. Kong also forms a bond Suko was with the best part of this primate. movie, in my Coming opinion. He was the funniest, most son. adorable little Again, dude. This comes across through the visuals, with Kong and Suko saying more with their eyes than they ever could with words. This trailer was so deceiving, thought it'd be all adorable, and then just like... Like that. <laughs> Their father-son rapport even brings God of War to mind. Rapport? Seriously, you've got an aging warrior with a grizzly beard, an axe, and a little kid with reddish hair. It's Kratos and Atreus if they were Donkey and Diddy Kong, which isn't a bad thing. There's so many references! Fine, DK. What's up? I've gotta look good. You do? Number one, worst featuring Godzilla. 
Despite getting top billing, Godzilla is truly a supporting player here. I did see a lot of complaints regarding this, and it's a fair complaint. I appreciated, like, the Kong storyline wrapping up. Godzilla was just pissed off, killing every- I, I don't know, I loved it. This is a fair complaint, though, but to make it better, they did state that if they make another movie, which they most likely will, because this one's doing very well, that it'll be the same thing, the same treatment Kong got, but with Godzilla. So the next movie would be, like, 85% Godzilla, 15% Kong. Kong can't stop this on his own. So it's fine anyways. He won't be alone. Although the extra time devoted to Kong leads to some strong character moments and world building, you'd think Godzilla would have more to do in a film that bears the monster's name. Between a brief fight in the beginning and the final act, Godzilla doesn't do anything that exciting. A brief fight in the beginning? He has like numerous crazy kaiju battles before the big end for a brief fight? Did you forget about the two kai- Literally freezing at one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why am I so negative today? I don't know. It's it early. It's fun seeing Godzilla <laughs> adapt as humanity's champion while attempting to coexist with the tiny people below. Godzilla sleeping in the Roman Colosseum is officially our new desktop background. Still, there are times when the film will cut to the giant lizard with little reason other than to remind us that this is supposed to be a Godzilla movie too. Not gonna lie, the Colosseum pissed me off a little bit at first because I was like, why are they treating Godzilla like a cat? But then I read it's because it resembles the ancient ruins of where his, like, his den used to be, so that made it cool. Number one, best, Kong, Godzilla, and other monsters teaming up, eventually. Monsterverse movies you had to throw it eventually. You couldn't just let slowly, it be nice. But delivering with their grand finales. Last time those two met up, it was almost the end of Kong. Godzilla Kong continues this trend. I feel like the core concept is Kaiju don't team up. They're pretty much like all on their own, unless it's a crazy world ending event. I mean, Mothra teams up with Godzilla a lot, but usually when he's about to die. While it takes longer than desired for Kong and Godzilla to join forces again, the audience is treated to the spectacle they were promised in time. Testicles! They're actually given more than promised, with a few new titans making their Monsterverse debut and even some old favorites returning for the final fight. I need to watch this movie several more times. Perfect. Peak Say what you cinema, will about baby. The Monsterverse, but when it wants to go big, it goes gigantic. The climax of this movie is no exception. Looking at the bigger picture, is there the another negative thing? I'm waiting for it. But it I think is there a is. humongous glass that's sure to quench anyone's thirst for kaiju smackdowns. What? Did you say the glass was half full? I think this is the end of the list. I'm being such a negative Nancy today, but dude, it's just a lot of these issues where just, I don't know, just seem kind of silly. How are people going to go into Godzilla X Kong upset that there aren't enough, like, there, there's not enough human backstories? Good. Thank God there isn't, because that would interrupt the kaiju. Either way, I'm gonna go drink a red- No, I'm already drinking a Red Bull. I don't know how to wake up anymore, dude. Like, how do people do it? Either way, leave a like, subscribe, uh, check out Watch Mojo for other of their Godzilla opinions, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>